You want to hear a story about how me and this bitch here fell out? It's kind of long, but it's full of suspense. Writing is just my way of like forgetting things, kind of like my healing process. And so, yeah, I was healing through it. So I was rewriting it and the engagement was there. It kind of just took a life of its own. To me, it read like a script. And, and when it came to adapting it, the most important thing was how do we translate the voice that is, you know, this electric voice that is in every drop of this text, that would be perhaps the most challenging thing. Otherwise, it was there. It was so visual and visceral and aggressive. There are a couple of liberties taken within real pieces that she wrote. And then there is something that happens in it that was not in the Twitter thread that we had talked about when I had asked it to sort of walk me through the events. But it is, I would say, very close to what she penned. This bitch with a nappy ass head was up in my face. Word. I mean, I was terrified because I obviously just wanted her to approve and <laughs> I wanted to honor her and honor what she's been through and make sure I hit the character. I worked at a strip club for a month to prepare for the role and kind of went in undercover and just got into the mindset eat or be eaten. I'm often asked to be like very understated and like naturalistic and whatever. Mm -hmm. And Janixa wanted to go like big with it and make it as crazy as possible. So that was really a fun experience for me. To me, you are so funny and spending time with you. And it was so important that we shine how funny you are and your comedic timing, which I think is quite brilliant. And <laughs> in the other work that you've done, you are more subdued and the tenor is a bit more dramatic. And it was so f exciting to get to play in this new way with you. Yeah, I think that's kind of in life. I'm not super serious, much more silly. And as you can tell right now. <laughs> uh, I have pneumonia. So goofy Just right so you know. From here on out, watch every move this bitch make. I play her boyfriend, lo lover. I deeply love her. She doesn't love me as much as I love her. That's not <laughs> That's what I feel, babe. Yeah, Derek is uh, pretty lost, I think, in life. I think he's a vapor without a vape, you know? Uh, we wanted him to be a vapor, and then I tried vaping a bunch the first day, and it was just, it's bad, it's hard. It's tough on the lungs. Actually, and yes, I it, remember you were like, I think he could vape, and I was like, just try it for the next <laughs> few hours and see what you think about that. And you were like, I, actually, like 30 minutes a later, terrible like, idea. I don't yeah, want to do that. Too. What brings y'all here? We make his money. I play the hero in the story. <laughs> Yes. Um, you know, <laughs> understated, you know, simple, kind man yes. who, you know, does some really um, terrible things to people. Um, but and, uh, I play X, and he's based on a real guy who did some, um, you know, sex trafficking and, you know, kidnapping, you know. Basically, I still wanted to find, like, what's human about him, and we had some size to him as well. And also to really examine, like, you know, he's based on a pretty terrible person. But you also have to humanize them and find out what makes them tick, what makes them, you know, what do they want. They want what everybody else wants too. They want family, the American dream, you name it. They want money. And uh, and then they pay the cost later. One of uh, our producers had said, I'm really worried that Coleman's too hot for this. And I was like, huh? But I remember when uh, my editor Joy and I would work on it, we would think about that. And we were like, well, yes, he is quite beautiful. But I think what she meant is that his spirit is, is so gentle and you want to root for him, but this is a person that you really don't want to root for. Look all this money you made. I'm so proud of you. I don't f with you.